Okay, I will try if I can. I'm gonna read it and just quickly oh, no. skim so I'm not like guessing what I'm oh, reading. Is that his fucking day? <laughs> oh my god, the title. Oh Jesus, right. Oh my god. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> this is amazing. I can only tell from the first two sentences that it's amazing. <laughs> I will literally, I'll read the first, like, couple of paragraphs just to give you an idea, Richard, of what this is. <laughs> right, okay. Denver. Like a doctor feeling for a pulse, Dave Honecker lays his hands on the wide plastic hose. It, I can't even do this seriously. Fuck's sake. Because it just sounds like I'm reading porn, because the it next does. bit is it begins to vibrate. It just sounds like I'm reading oh, porn. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I kind of like zoned out, and I came back to you doing that. I was like, what the fuck is she reading a porn fiction here? <laughs> yeah, I know, it sounds like porn. Yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, everybody say hello. Um, it begins to vibrate as pebbles and dirt rush through. It shudders a bit, then is still. Oh God! <laughs> I don't like this. Honaker smiles, the furry body of a prairie dog, still in its subterranean hole, is plugging <laughs> the end of the hose. It's only a matter of time now. <laughs> you can feel when he's fighting back. Honaker yells over the roar of the powerful suction. He's got a good hold, and then he loses it. Just then, the hose jolts, and with a rumbling whoosh, the rodents shoot up the hose. One Honaker mouths, his eyes gleaming with excitement. What the fuck? <laughs> a moment later, another whoosh. Two! It's like playing That's the violin, Honecker says modestly. After five years, you get a little better. <laughs> Honecker is a master of the latest in rodent control technology. The Prairie Dog Vacuum, aptly named Dog Gone. It was invented by Honecker's partner, Gay, I'm not even going to try and pronounce Brilliant. his second name, just fuck that. Who oh. literally dreamed up this Rube Goldberg-like contraption? It came. There's a backstory to this. It came to him one night five years ago in his Cortez Colo home. A 50-year-old machine shop owner was down on his luck and nearly bankrupt after building a marina that was riddled with delays and cost overruns. Oh wow. The bank it's stepped a, in and it's took up everything. Dog crew, I can't do. <laughs> My machine shop, Marina, everything went down the tubes, no pun intended. Balfour said, one night my wife said, why don't you ask the Lord to help us? Oh fuck. The next week, I had this dream to catch prairie dogs in the huge vacuum. <laughs> 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 what? Well, I'm starting about this really dramatic description of the baby doll Kuva and it's so fucking thing that it's true to go and say this way, but then I got a dream. Oh, for baby dogs, yeah. oh my god! In his dream, he saw an enormous yellow truck with a green hose sticking out of it, sucking prairie dogs out of the ground. Oh my god, psychologists would have a field day with his fucking dreams, man. <laughs> The dream was so vivid that he still remembered the size of the hose and where it was attached the next morning. <laughs> he shrugged it off. Oh no, I don't like us. <laughs> he shrugged it off and went to work as usual. But over the next few days, a serendipitous chain of events unfolded that was anything but usual. <laughs> <laughs> the day after <laughs> the day after his dream, he had a job at the Ute Mountain Indian Reservation repairing the farm's irrigation system. The land was being overrun by prairie dogs that were digging up the corn seed. The holes were like landmines to farm equipment. The tribe had been pouring poison down the hole. There's a tribe now? What? The tribe had been pouring poison down the holes to get rid of them, but the varmints just kept coming back. I didn't say I had.
had a dream last night, Barker said, he told the ranch manager. But I said I was working on a project. When can you put something together? Oh. Balfour first needed a truck. On the way home, he stopped by his local sewer district office, as you do, and was astonished to learn a truck used for cleaning out sewer lines and manholes were for sale. It was yellow, just like the dream. Fucking <laughs> old girl, move aside. John <laughs> Steinbeck, move the fuck. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Next, he went to the industrial supply store, and there, hanging on the wall, were four inch hoses. They were green, <laughs> just like the dream time! <laughs> I don't know what you believe in, but I believe it's supposed to happen this way. He modified the truck, attached the hose, and within three days was back at the Indian reservation, sucking up prairie dogs. The critter, the critters hurled through the four-inch plastic hose at 300 miles per hour, like cannonballs they shot out in the end into a big tank on the back of the truck, first slamming into a wall of thick foam rubber, rubber then toppling up onto a foam and dirt-covered floor. It all made for a wild ride for the squirrel-like rodents, and for the most part, they fared well. A little dazed and confused at first, but scampering around almost immediately. In the first 45 minutes, Balfour caught 23 prairie dogs. The tribe was so impressed, it gave him a $6,000 contract. He caught 1,000 prairie dogs. Balfour was in business. Since then, he and Honecker have been travelling to prairie dog towns across the southwest. Balfour drives a yellow truck and Honecker tows an old trailer they live in at job sites. Depending on the job, they either relocate, exterminate, or sell the prairie dogs for pets or meat. Okay. <laughs> Earlier this summer, Balfour was hired by an exotic pet, Joe Exotic, dealer to, well, no, actually, I'm just joking, um, dealer to clear a prairie dog town in Amarillo, Texas, and sell the young ones as pets. They go as mu for as much as $145 a piece in the States, a and piece? 300 yeah, a piece it says. <laughs> And three hundred and fifty dollars in Japan. Balfour was paid twenty five dollars a pup. He also sold them as meat to federal breeding programs of endangered species such as captive black footed ferrets that prey on prairie dogs for food. Aw poor prairie dogs. Animal rights activists are um, ambivalent about doggone. They are pleased that Balfour's method can save prairie dogs rather than kill them, even though he said he could exterminate them earlier. But wish to all oh right, but wish that he never resorted to extermination. Plus, while most of the critters that sail through his vacuum appear healthy afterward, some have died. Balfour says. Balfour says they die either of heat stroke after being outside their cool subterranean burrows for too long, or they might hit a rock in their tunnels before they're sucked oh up. My oh my god! god. 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 Just getting a concussion in a rock! <laughs> Oh my god, we're not arch enemies, but we're completely opposed to making them pets, said Paula Martin, a member of Prairie Ecosystem Conservation Alliance. Fuck, that was a mouthful. A group of volunteers that rescue prairie dogs and relocates them to, I don't know, to a 4,000 acre sanctuary southeast of Denver. He's in it for the money. And she's not so sure that sucking up the animals at 300 miles per hour is all that humane. But Balfour <laughs> defends his system. This little ride up the hose is nothing compared to what they do to some of them. He said, he said some of the landowners who like routinely use them as target practice. Oh my god, this goes on for... Alright, it doesn't go on for too much longer, but it's good. <laughs> 
At Balfour's job in Denver on this hot summer day, he and Honecker are vacuuming prairie dogs from an open field next to a Kaiser, Kaiser yeah, right, okay. Medical centre, where the little creatures are eating through the sprinkler <coughs> system. Last year, the Alliance tried to rid the same field of the critters, coaxing them by flushing the holes with soapy water. <laughs> Dangling their arms down the holes, the volunteers grabbed the dogs as they scurried up for dry ground. But they didn't get them all this year. So the this year, Kaiser Permanente called Dog on to suck them out and the Alliance to relocate them. At first, the Dog on concept struck Kaiser's Tom Kurrigan as funny, but he had a serious problem and hoped that the two-man operation could solve it. We didn't want to exterminate. We wanted to relocate, said Kurrigan in charge of Kaiser's community affairs. We wanted to be more humane. Out in the field, Balfour and Honecker wear matching doggone t-shirts and yellow ball caps go about their work. Peering through the binoculars, he keeps in his front seat next to the bug spray and a golf ball sucked up on a previous job why site. Do why do we need that information? <laughs> Balfour spots two prairie dogs. They're standing on their hind legs, watching the big yellow truck ramble closer. In an instant, they dart through the buffalo grass and chickweed, then dive into a cone-shaped mound of the earth. Let's go dogging, Balfour says, what? accelerating. <laughs> Yeehaw! And that is the end. <laughs> Let's go dogging! <laughs> Oh my god, that was the best article I've ever read in my life. Oh my god. Oh my god. No, do you know what we need to do? We need to write an origin story of the prairie dog that's gonna combat the vacuums. We need to write it. Emma, I fucking hope with all my hair. Oh my good god, Roman, tell me you are, you can be videoed, voice videoed. Oh, yes, yes, I can. Yeah, she oh, can. I'm day. saving that. I'm saving oh, that. I'm yes. saving it. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, save it. <laughs> no, I don't 